Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. Last week's rack of the week featured a rack where I actually failed. I missed a shot during that rack. And I mentioned that occasionally I'll be reviewing a rack by a professional player. So as long as we're doing something different, why not do that this week? And who better to pick than John Schmidt? But first, let's do a rack by Thorsten Homan. Let's get into the rack. This is a rack from a 200 ball run by Thorsten Homan. It's on his YouTube channel, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. This rack starts with a classic Thorsten Homan power draw. He's going to draw the cue ball all the way up to the head rail and back down. Look at his setup. He's using extreme outside English, which I think is very interesting. Watch his stroke delivery, and then I'll play it again in slow motion. It's incredible how fast he delivers the cue, how much acceleration he achieves. And what's even more incredible is how straight the delivery is. Stroke defects show up more easily the harder you hit a shot. And on top of that, he has to get the cue stick out of the way of the cue ball and still delivers a deadly straight stroke. The advantage of hitting the ball so hard is that the rack opens up well. It's very unlikely you're going to have any significant clusters, which is the case here. But notice, even given how hard Thorsten hit that break shot, there's only one ball up table. Every other ball is below the side pockets. You can see Thorsten's shooting almost before the balls come to a stop. He's shot so many racks of straight pool that he instinctively knows what to do. Obviously, there's one up table ball, and he wants to go get that before too many balls down table are eliminated, and he's going to do that. The other thing that he instantly goes to is making a break shot. Now, what I would do is shoot the 13 and then the 3, knowing that I can use the 3 to set up on the 2 or 9 to create a break ball from either the 12 or the 14. It looks like those two rack area balls. But Thorsten moves the cue ball down to create a break shot using the 13. Now, possibly he's saving the 3 as a backup break ball, or he just knows that it's more important to create the break ball first. Notice that he got an inside angle on the two ball, which is just what you want to send the cue ball up to create a break shot. And I'm going to tell you, that's no accident. Thorsten wasn't hoping to get that angle. He played specifically for that angle. His speed control is impeccable, and you see that over and over when he runs uh, racks of straight pool. So he's going to nudge this stripe over for a break shot, and depending on where the cue ball stops, he'll have an insurance ball. What he does next is incredibly straight pool savvy, and it looks very simple because it is by design. I mentioned earlier that he wants to get that 11 ball way up table before there's too many balls removed. Now that he has a break shot, that's his goal. And so the next three shot sequence is for the goal of getting up to that ball while preserving the proper balls down table. So he's gonna use this solid to get position on the stripe to get position on the one ball in order to go up table and get the 11. In the same position, I might have shot the nine ball and then that other stripe to get on the one. And I think that's a mistake. There's a straight pool principle that says, during the middle of a rack, leave one ball along the bottom rail. You're gonna need it to maneuver and to play position at the end of the rack to get on your break shot. Another advantage to that three shot sequence is that he opened up the bottom left corner pocket for this stripe ball. When you think in terms of clearing lanes to pockets, you increase your options later in the rack. This three-shot sequence that Thorsten shoots is super easy. The shots are very simple and so is the position. Like I said, that's by design. The hard part is seeing it and knowing that those are the correct shots to shoot next. When Thorsten shoots this 11 ball, he's playing position for the solid on the left side of the table. But look at all the available shots he has to come back down table to. So here we are at the middle of the rack. Thorsten's removed his only trouble ball, the up table ball. He's created a break shot and cleared lanes to pockets. And there are seven balls left. That's efficient straight pool. And he's giving himself multiple options for running the end pattern and getting on his break shot. It would be perfect if there was a key ball right about where the cue ball is located. But, but there are several options, the nine ball, the 5, the 12, the, all of those are potential key balls for the break shot. And notice something else. Of the f 6 balls that remain, 5 of them are in the center of the table. 
And this is the result of what we call working from the outside in. And that's just excellent straight pool. Now from this point, I think there's a lot of ways to run the remaining balls and get on your break shot. What I look for is the key ball and K2 ball relationship. I want those balls kind of diagonally from each other. So I see that the three ball could be a K2 ball for the 12, or the three ball could be a K2 ball for the four, or your last three balls could be three, 12, five. But if you're gonna shoot any of those combinations, that means that you've gotta get rid of the eight ball and the nine ball now. Well, how do you get from the eight ball to the nine? Well, preserving the three ball. Instead, since the eight ball leads naturally to the three, it makes much more sense to shoot those two balls first and then use the nine ball to get on your K2 and K balls. Now, as you see, Thorson has chosen to go three, 12, nine. I might have tried to go three, nine, 12. And I think by leaving that extra ball in the rack area, I create more trouble for my end pattern. So Thorson's going to use the nine ball to get on those other two balls. Either the five or the four go in the left side pocket, and either ball can be used to get position on the other. That said, I'm sure that Thorson's position on that five in the side was very deliberate and precise. He got high on the five ball so that he could slide over and get an angle on the four ball to slide up for his break shot. Let's look at his last three balls again. A lot of commentators, I think, would make the point that these three balls form a triangle. And some of you already know that I am not a fan of the triangle. Yes, of course, you could connect these three balls and that forms a triangle. But frankly, you could connect any three balls almost anywhere on the table and make a triangle. So what? All that proves is that triangles have three vertices. In my opinion, what makes a really good key ball and K2 ball is that position from the K2 ball to the key ball and then to the break shot is very natural with limited cue ball movement. And that's almost always achieved when the key ball and K2 ball are located diagonally from each other or go in pockets on opposite sides of the table. And that's what you wanna be looking for for the end of your end pattern, not some irrelevant triangle. So anyway, for Thorsten's next break shot, he's got a shallow angle and so this is a stun to the side rail and spin to the bottom rail. But again, his powerful stroke opens the balls wide with hardly any cluster. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found that informative and helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. Check out my book, A Short Stop on Straight Pool. You can find it at shortstoponpool.com. And stay tuned for next week's Rack of the Week.